All right, great. It's working. All right, we are clean. Dogs are barking already. Dogs are barking, so we are on. So we, we know that this video is rolling. We don't start barking till we roll. That's how it rolls. My shadow. Hi everyone, welcome to Shelf Control. I'm Norm. I'm Lisa. And today <clears throat> we're going to do an unboxing of our Nerd Stay Hall. There's an online store called uh, GameNerds.com, not a sponsor, and they do an annual sale where they have 50 games that go on sale over a 10 hour period, five games every hour and they promote it with all kinds of uh, clues as to what games are coming out and so uh, boardgamegeek.com had a forum thread where everyone was was working guessing trying to figure out what games were, were going to go on sale at, at what hour and <clears throat> so uh, so we we also partook in that sale and purchased some games and the box arrived just the other day and we thought we would open that up for you. Uh, this year, the uh, Nerds Day just happened to fall on our wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we we took a little little break from Nerds Day to spend some, some time together in, instead. Honey, happy anniversary. But there's one thing I want you to do for me. Yes, my love. I want you to refresh the website. It's eight o'clock. So now uh, we got the box over here. I'll give. I don't want the knife. You don't want the knife. Then the knife. I will. this that Norm pretty much did the ordering of the games he looked at the five that were released every hour he's more of a gamer than I am he knows more about games that haven't been released that have been released old games new games so if he says there's a new game I want to try I'm all for trying it so <clears throat> I have no idea he may have told me the names of these games I couldn't tell you anything about them what they look like I don't even think I saw the available games every hour. He had me drive to dinner so that he could refresh the feed because it was during, it was crossing a, an hour as we were going where we were going and coming back. So I was driving so he could refresh things and he was like, oh, I want this one. I didn't know much about it and he put it in the cart. And so this is gonna be new for me too. Some of these games were ones that have been on my want list and some of them the price was just right <laughs> for me to get them to give them a try and uh, to see what we okay, thought. Okay, our first one is <clears throat> Boon Lake. Boon Lake. This this was one that I've been a little bit interested in, but was not interested enough to pull the trigger when it first came out. Uh, it's by Alexander Pfister. Do you remember Alexander Pfister? I've heard the name. I can't tell you what. It's Great Western Trail. Great Western and, Trail. And Maracaibo. And so this is another game of his. And it looked interesting, but it also follows a lot of the same Rondell kind of mechanic of Great okay. Western Trail Maracaibo where you're going around. And so I was kind of passing on it. But then, <clears throat> you want to crack it open? We can. Oh. Oh, excellent. And so at the, at the price that it was on Nerd's Day, it was, I figured it was worth giving it a try because we've enjoyed his other games in the past. And we will be doing a, a playthrough of Great Western Trail that is one Jenny's played. It's just not in order yet, so we haven't gotten to it. 
So that is one of my favorite games. Um, interesting story behind that that we'll share when we do our playthrough, but I can't wait to do that one because I am a big fan of Great Western Trail, the original version. They give you a chunk of wood with the cowboy, cowboy meeples that look familiar. I wonder what those stickers are Interesting. For. So we've got cards, we've got bags. Oh dear, lots of pop-outs, lots of pop-outs. This is, uh, looks like it's got some more. Well, with pop-outs, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, yes. I'm gonna get attached. I, I actually remember, <clears throat> in, in this one, it's a dual layered board that you kind of make yourself. Oh. These, these parts punch out and then fold over to make the dual layered board. Interesting. So that's the first time I've seen it done that way. And that I think that's what these might be for is to help hold those boards shut. <clears throat> so there's either one missing in the corner, stuck on something, <laughs> something or we'll it, it, it wasn't supposed to come <laughs> with it. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see when we get that out. Okay. So Boone Lake. Boone Lake, game number one. Oh dear. Unk? Yes, Unk, Gods, of, Gods Egypt. of Egypt. This was one that you know, was a Kickstarter game <coughs> that came with ridiculous amounts of plastic and and stuff like that. And I it didn't intrigue me enough to pay the amounts for uh, for the Kickstarter. You want some help? Nope. So but this this is a game by uh, designed by Eric Lang. I don't know that name. So he's he's the guy who did um, Blood Rage. Okay, that's one we've just recently got. Have yes. I played it? Is that yes, the pirate we, ship? We, no, no. Uh, it's the Vikings with the with the monsters that you can. It's got a card drafting system. We played it with uh, with our son. And I this, played it too. Yes. Oh yes yes. And and this is one along the, the same lines as as, as that <clears throat> but it's the non kickstarter version so it doesn't have all the fancy plastic oh wow it's got a box and, inside a box and it's got a box inside a box because it while it doesn't come with all of the the plastic goodies oh my goodness from the kickstarter <clears throat> It still has a sizable wow. amount of, wow. of okay. plastic goodies. This this is looking familiar as far as Blood Rage, because they have some pretty big mini yes. in that too. Wow, look at this. So and th these are your individual player pieces here. They're all males. Okay, now that's a female. Okay. So, and they're based off of Egyptian gods, so I, I don't I don't know what the male female ratio for those are. These are pretty cool looking. So these are huge. It wouldn't be a Simon game without crazy uh, crazy bits of plastic. <coughs> so this this was one that I was kind of iffy on. It has this interesting mechanic that is kind of controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. And when you're playing with more than two people, it has this mechanic where at a certain point in the game, the two people who are in the last place, their gods will merge together as, as one and become a, a, a player of their own. Huh. And I've, I've some, some people seem to like it, some people don't. I, I don't know that it sounds all that intriguing to me, but... I just like the box. What, uh, the, the, the price was right for me to try it, and uh, Z Garcia on the, the Dice Tower, he really likes it as a two-player game. Wow, Boon Lake is heavier than mm -hmm. Onk. <laughs> so, uh, I pretty much got this, Almost specifically just for two player to play with Lisa. 
and see if see if we like it because it could be a two player alternative to uh, to Blood Rage because Blood Rage isn't great with the two. Mm. We haven't tried it with two, have we? I don't know if we have. I don't recall. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, the search for Planet X. The search for Planet X. This was one that this has been on my list that I've been interested in looking at. It's got a uh, a deduction game where. You're searching for Planet X, and I believe it uses a an app to help uh, hide where the planet is. But everyone is working together. Uh, they're working against each other. But as you discover stuff, some of that information becomes public, I believe. And so, almost like a, a clue kind of game, you're trying to figure out, based off of the laws that you're learning, like the the planet can't be next to this, or it's it's not in the same quadrant with this. You're you're somehow narrowing down to find out where the planet is and try to discover where it is before everyone else does. And I'm I'm struggling a little bit. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this would be the board that has all the different quadrants where you can put the different information of what you're discovering. And just telescopes. Yep. And a little wooden sun goes in the middle, I guess. Hmm. That makes sense. So. And then just more components underneath. We won't get everything out. So I'm, I'm curious <clears throat> to see how, how this one goes. Uh, I haven't really played a game that uses an app. <laughs> and I do like the the trying to figure out logically where things need to be so we'll, we'll see how that plays when we play games that involve us working against each other to find hidden things i'm usually the one to to find them so we'll eventually get to those videos but i have found you in letters to white chapel letters to white chapel i have found your hidden base in um star wars uh, rebellion star wars rebellion so he's not good at hiding things from me in gameplay and not so that's that's the reason why we had our wedding anniversary on nerd day <laughs> 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 all right the crew mission deep space deep sea deep sea <laughs> so we we've got the original crew and we liked it a lot we actually took it um on vacation with his parents, we went out of town for a couple weeks and took it. His mom wasn't that interested in playing it, but his dad was. And so we, I don't think we got we, through we it. We almost got all we, the way all the way through it. When we come back from, from sightseeing, we'd, we'd play through a couple missions. And, and it was fun. And it, it was a lot of, lot of fun. And this one, from everything I've heard, takes the original and improves upon it. Because oh, nice. You're, uh, <clears throat> instead of just having before you had your goal cards, which would say, you know, like in this case, it says, I will win the blue four. Mm. Basically all the cards in the original game had colored of the numbers that that person had to win. And these ones mix it up a little bit more with, uh, like I'll take the first trick or I'll take the last trick or it, it changes up some of the things that, that you'll be, be going for. And it also, on the back, <clears throat> has, uh, depending on how many people you're playing with, the, the difficulty level. Mm. And so as you're going through the scenarios, I'll say pick a difficulty of eight, and so you'll draw these cards out until you get an eight of the number. Because some of these are easier with fewer people, and some of them are harder with fewer people, and so they, they balance them out that way. The original is space, right? Yes. Okay. Is it deep space? Um, I think you're looking for... It's almost like Search for Planet X. Uh, search for Planet 9 or something? Okay. I have, I, have, I don't remember. Okay. <coughs> so we're at four. What else have we got in here? We've got the quacks of Quidlinburg? Quidlinburg. Yeah. This was one that I've been interested in, but have been reluctant to buy specifically because of the upgraded components that you can get for it. 
so th this game. <coughs> I know you... this designer. No, I don't. No. No. Well, it almost looked like um, Sheriff of Nottingham. No, the art is similar. It might be the same same artist. Norm likes to test me to see if I remember designers or, or so forth, and I'm horrible with names. So it's taken years of marriage to remember his name is Norm. So this, this game, you have these components. There's the yellow, and the, there's, there's pumpkins here, <coughs> and there's like some, some sort of berries here. Hmm. And there, there are these little cardboard punch-outs that you collect in a bag and you're pulling them out of your bag and adding them to your cauldron here, making your potions. And so you've got all these cardboard components that go into the bag and then you mix in and, and, and pull out. Oh. And potions. people really like this game. The, this, this I seems, like potions. This, this, is, this is fairly highly re reviewed. People seem to, to like it. <clears throat> the, the problem is, I think if, if we like it, uh, board game geek on their store they have the geek geek up bits which have little plastic pieces for all of these no, no, things no, 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 and no, no. so when you put them into your bag they'll clack around like the uh like azul tiles oh which that's pleasing i think is a whole lot more pleasing so this is a game that that i, I got to see if we we'll like it actually hoping that maybe we don't because <laughs> that, that geek up set is <clears throat> pretty expensive it, it might just double the cost of the game with what we uh paid for it on nerds day all right so that's haul number five how many did we get i don't know let's go okay innis innis this is one that has been on my want list for a while. This was the one that I was hoping would be on Nerds Day. This was the one I was looking forward to the, the most. And it's kind of a Blood Rage kind of game itself. Uh, it's an area control. It's a card drafting game. <coughs> but uh, the, the way that, that it works... It it has a uh, oh, box feels nice. It has a it has a, a a win condition that reminds me sort of a, a Cyclades or games like that where the game ends when somebody meets a certain criteria and there's three or four different criterias to reach and so you have to kind of keep an eye on what everyone else is doing. Oh, they're getting a certain number of temples. I need to make sure that I take one of their temples to keep them from winning sort of thing. And We've it's got, got these big. it's got these interesting <clears throat> tile shapes that somehow they designed is this to, Celtic to all click together. Yes. And so I've actually been excited to try this game and was happy to see it show up on the Well, on I'm happy day. now. So it's got like the big, it's got big cards with the, with the same kind of art as on the box. Some plastic components in here. Nice. <coughs> so I'm excited to try this one out. Let's play two to four. I don't know how well it would play two, but. Okay. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think this is the last one. I believe seven is it. Hold on. Seven is it. Seven is this it. This was a big box. Cascadia is our last one. Cascadia is uh, along the lines of the game Calico, which we don't have, and uh, I was curious about. But I've actually I've heard that Cascadia is almost like a uh, less stressful, more relaxing version of, of Calico. We don't have Calico. So we don't have Calico, and so we'll we'll see. 
We'll see if there's ever a sale on, on Calico. I'm not all that interested in, in picking it up. Now of all these games, I mean, I, I know the crew just because we have the original, but this is the only name that sounds familiar to me. So none of these the others. Cascadia? Mm -hmm. I've heard of, I've seen it. This looks familiar. So just maybe in some of the videos you've watched or, mm -hmm. or things. So that it's familiar, but <clears throat> none of these others are. This reminds me of a game we've played that has water, that has animals with tiles that you kind of put together. I'm giving so much information. Uh, uh, hunters and Gatherers? Car Carcassonne Hunters yes. and Gatherers? Yes. Is it the same? I. It's got tiles and water and animals. <laughs> which is, which is it's the exactly same. the same. But uh, the way that this works, oh, they got, got lots of this, punch out. It's, it's wooden tiles with the, with the pictures of the animals on it. That's neat. A card with a grizzly bear on it. I'm already interested. Yeah, so you'll have these animals, animal scoring cards, which give you points depending on how the animals are out on your, on your board. And so in this case, grizzly bears, you get points for having mating pairs. So having two bears together will give you points. Hmm. And the way that the game works... Bag to put everything in. ...is you, what you have to pick from at the beginning of the, of the turn is a certain number of these discs with the animals on it paired up with one of the, the hexagons. That and kind so, of match its habitat? And it, it may not match. So you may get like <clears> the, <throat> this forest that can have a bear with the salmon. And, Which doesn't make sense. But if you want the bear tile, you have to take the salmon with it. Mm. And so there's this kind of a thing where it's like, okay, I don't necessarily need that, that tile, but I really need that token. And so there's, you're kind of building out your land at the same time that you're populating the land with the animals trying to get those scoring objectives. Okay, so this is our haul. We've got seven, seven games. Which one are you most interested in playing first? <coughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards Innis or Ankh. It really depends. Maybe Cascadia. Cascadia might be one. That's be a good idea. That that might be interesting. All of these <coughs> are intriguing in some way, and in the in the case of Quacks, it's a little bit scary because I don't want to like this one. <laughs> so, well, but, uh, this is this is the first time that I've ever had this many games all at once that haven't been played. Usually I'll get a game or two and I'll crack them open and sleeve them, read the rules, play through a couple dummy turns to figure out how it's played, and then get it to the table immediately. Do we have enough sleeves for all of these? So I I looked through my, my sleeves, looked through Board Game Geek. Board Game Geek has a great uh, list of all the games and all the sleeves that are necessary and all the what brand of sleeves takes what model of each sleeve and looking through I think I have most of these already I think there might oh. be uh, a couple that I needed to need to do more but okay uh, so this is the one I want to play first I mean uh, maybe yeah then I would say Ennis because it's Celtic and I love everything Celtic and then probably Ankh because it's Egyptian and I love I love ancient Egypt stuff. And then and Quacks probably because it looks fun. And the rest can just come in whatever order. Yeah, uh, so you know we're we're already going through some games with, with Jenny, so <clears throat> I don't know when these are gonna start cycling into into oh, it's the gonna mix. Be such a while. It's it's kind of unnerving having this many 
and played games just sitting there waiting. Let's be real. He's going to open these games up. He's going to sleeve them. And then he's going to play two or three players by himself to get a feel for the game, to understand how it works. So that then he can teach me how to play. And then once we both know how to play, we'll teach Jenny. And so he's going to play all of these within the coming weeks. I have no doubt whatsoever. I, I, I hope. I hope to see these in the next couple of weeks. Because... Not only are these these seven games, but there's these games over here that you can't see that, you can't that see. we haven't introduced Jenny to yet. Uh, we're working so on videos games. of games that we have already what's, introduced. What's our to. next one to to film? I think that the next one is. I know what it is. It's Feast for Odin, isn't it? It's, it's Terraforming Mars. It's ter We did Terraforming Mars before Feast for Odin. We did. We did Terraforming Mars as the second game that we introduced her to. That's right, because she caught on to Wingspan <coughs> so well that Norm suggested we introduce her to Terraforming Mars because he thought she would pick that up really, really quickly. So. And oh, so, that'll be. Oh, that's going to be a long playthrough. Well, we've. I don't think we'll be able to do a playthrough because we've been having problems with uh, the overhead mm -hmm. camera, and that game can go three plus hours so it may just be a uh, review of that game getting jenny's thoughts and our our thoughts yeah. as well there might be some cut scenes of the playthrough yes so so we'll, we'll we'll see <clears throat> we're, we're going to keep putting out these these videos uh if you if you like what what we're doing then leave a like let us know give us a comment uh subscribe we're going to be Putting out more of these as, as we go. We're just em embracing our amateurness <laughs> and our unprofessionalism, and that's gonna, that's going to be our niche. That's on, who we are. That's going to be our little uh, little corner of yep. YouTube. We're going to be the unprofessionals. And, and in real life, YouTube, it's all the same. Unprofessional. So that maybe that'll make us stand out between all those <laughs> professional sites out there that look so much better and sound so much better than us. But we're having fun. So we'd love to have you join us. So anyways, that's it from us. If there's any of these games that you would like us to uh, introduce to Jenny first, please let us know and we'll, we'll try to bump those up. And uh, we'll talk to you later. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.